A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you still there? Rio City, the little town on the American shore of the Rio Grande, drowsed under the late afternoon sun. Even the Boundary Cafe, the haunt of outlaws from both sides of the river and blazing with light all night long, showed no sign of life. Suddenly, a rider, powdered with dust, raced into town and reined up in front of the large two-story building. Move, 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 move. A sheriff star gleamed on his shirt. As he entered the cafe, a half-breed sprang to attention behind the bar. Sheriff, what are you doing here? Where's Bill? Back there in the office. What are you doing in Rio City on election day? Mind your own business. Well, why aren't you at the county seat? It's all over. I'm beaten. There'll be a new sheriff by tonight. Did you have to run away? I tell you, it's a landslide for Rick Chalmers. It's better to run away than be ridden out of town on the rail. <laughs> well, what's so funny? You are. <laughs> well, pardon me if I don't get the joke. What happens now with Rick Chalmers enforcing the law in Claiborne County? I don't know. But Rick's an old friend of mine. He wanted to marry me once. Yeah, that's water under the bridge. He hasn't forgotten me. He's not your kind. He's honest. You always knew that. I'm honest, in my way. Yeah, your ways are different. Senorita. What is it, Pedro? It's an hombre who just right up. He wears a mask. A mask? In Rio City? This is somebody I've never seen before. <laughs> Maybe it's a holdup. Ready with your guns, you two. I'll have a talk with this stranger. He's coming in the door now. Howdy, stranger. Are you Belle Maitland? Yeah, that's right. friend of yours sent me here. Who? Didn't he tell you that you don't have to wear a mask in Rio City? The friend is Rick Chalmers. Well, that's downright interesting. Does that mean our new sheriff is picking up where the old one left off? Is Rick sending me customers? No, Miss Maitland. I've come here to warn you that you must close the boundary. And this warning comes from Rick? It does. Well, you can tell him that I have no intention of closing. You have a reputation for being smart. I am. And you should realize that since you no longer control the sheriff's office, you can get away with harboring outlaws here. Outlaws? Here? Yes. You ask no questions and they pay you well. The West is changing. 
There's no place in the country for a town like Rio City. I'm curious about one thing, stranger. Yes? How does it happen that Rick chose you to deliver this warning? It's a friendly warning. It couldn't be delivered by a man who wears a deputy's badge. Caramba, that horse outside, the mask. I know who this hombre is. I have an idea myself. Same here. No wonder you lost the election, Van. Mister, I must admit that I'm impressed by this visit. But that doesn't mean that I'm afraid. You refuse to take Rick's advice? The boundary belongs to me. This is my castle, and I'll defend it if I have to. Look at those shutters. They're thick enough to stop any bullet, and they're fitted with gun slots. We have plenty of rifles and ammunition. We can stand off any posse that Sheriff Chalmers can raise. For how long? For as long as we're attacked. There's no criminal charge against you now. But there will be as soon as you let your paying guests come back. Why? If you give them protection, you'll share their guilt in the eyes of the law. You'll go to jail. If they go to jail. They will. That's all I have to say. I'll show you. No. Keep your gun in your holster. But there. No. When he turned his back on us. It was a compliment to me. We may not have the same code, but he knows that I wouldn't stand for anyone shooting a man in the back. Silver. Yeah, the Lone Ranger. You'll be back, Bill. You'll be sorry you didn't let me plug him. I've never forgiven either you or myself if you had. But what are we going to do? We've had our warning. If it comes to a fight, we'll be ready. During the days that followed, hardened outlaws from both sides of the river drifted back into Rio City. Most of them lived at the Boundary Cafe, and the lower floor was crowded day and night. Guards were posted at the ford and on all the trails leading into town. But the new sheriff made no move. And one evening, Van Gordon was congratulating himself. You know, Pedro, I'm glad I lost that election. Nice to be back with the boys all the time. You've been watching your roulette table? No, that game isn't for me. And you do not know how much Tex Roberts won tonight. Who, the rancher? See, si. you win big. Yeah, how much? Five thousand. He's in the office with his senorita now. He pay off the mortgage he hold on his ranch. She can't let him do that. He has the money. The senorita cannot refuse to take it. But that ranch is supposed to come to me after we foreclose. It's too bad he win tonight. Hmm. He hasn't gone home yet. No, but he will not play again. Maybe he won't get home. I'll cut you in on half the ranch. You help me stop him. Stop it? Dry coach. Yeah. But what good will it do to kill him now? The mortgage has been paid. He won't burn it till he gets home. I don't understand. If he dies in the trail, we'll still have the mortgage. His wife will have no proof that it's been paid. You forget the senorita. She'll have to back me up. She promised me that ranch. Half of it goes to you if you help me, Pedro. He, he's a good ranch. How about it? See, I go with you. Where's Tex now? He's still in the office. And there's plenty of time to get our ambulance. The Lone Ranger's camp was in a small clump of trees overlooking the trail from Rio City to the county seat. He was just preparing to unsaddle Silver when the great horse whinnied. And the masked man looking down at the trail saw paint racing toward the woods. It's Tonto, Silver. A few moments later, Tonto dismounted beside the small campfire. Oh, Scott, go there. Go there. Easy, Tonto. Easy. Well, Tonto, what do you have to report? Well, me go get job at Boundary, like you say. Take care of horses. I suppose it's running wide open. Uh, more men come every day. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to ride into town to the sheriff's house. He's expecting us. Uh, He's brought all his wanted notices home. You can go through them. And that good. Tonto see picture and tell you if crook hide out. At Boundary. That's the idea. Then the sheriff can get a warrant and go after them. What matter with Silver? <laughs> He's been standing guard for me, keeping me posted on anyone coming along the trail. Ah, Tonto Seahorse now. There's a chestnut. It's a woman riding him. Masabi, horse stumble. The woman's been thrown. Come on, easy, big fella. Come on, little Easy, easy, easy. How bad it hurt, Kimasabi? Just knocked out, I think. Murderer. Did you hear that, Tuttle? Uh. Murderers. You better take her into the sheriff's. Catch your horse. Uh, how to do that? The Lone Ranger carried the unconscious woman in his arms as he and Tuttle rode through the back streets of the town to the sheriff's house. Rick Chalmers, 
recognized her at once when the masked man carried her inside. It's Meg Roberts, Texas wife. Here, put her down on the couch. There. She's coming to now. I'll talk to her. All right, we'll wait outside. Hello, Meg. Meg. How did I get here? What happened? Your horse stumbled through you. A couple of friends of mine brought you here. Oh, Rick, I, I saw them shoot him. I, I saw them. Now, wait a minute, Meg. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? My friends didn't shoot anybody. I didn't mean that. Tex, he's dead, Rick. What? They murdered him, and, and I saw them do it. Who murdered him? Pedro and Van Gordon. Well, where? How did it happen? Tell me everything. Tex said he was going to ride into Rio City to buy some tobacco. But he promised me he wouldn't gamble. Well, it got late and I was worried, so I saddled a horse and went after him. Go on, go on, Meg. Well, I got to the top of a rise and I could see him riding toward me, so I reined up. Then all of a sudden there was a rifle shot. He fell out of his saddle. You said you saw Van Gordon and Pedro? They were hiding up behind some rocks on the top of the ridge. They stood up and the moon was on their faces. They saw me and they started after me and I rode as fast as I could. <laughs> now, don't worry, Meg. Don't worry. Gordon and the breed will hang for this. I'll be back. It's her husband who's been murdered. Van Gordon and Pedro Dragos him. What are you going to do? Round up a posse, get a warrant, and head for the boundary. But you know, I think I could make this arrest all by myself. Why? There are things that Bell won't stand for. This is one of them. When she finds out what Van and Pedro have done, she won't give them any protection. Sooner or later, you're going to have to tackle the boundary with a posse. Let's have a look at your wallet notices and see how many outlaw Toto recognizes. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. We'll have to clean out the place sooner or later. You'll need plenty of men. I'll get every able-bodied man in town. At the boundary, Van and Pedro had confessed to Bell what they had done. And Meg Roberts saw you? Yeah, she might not have recognized us. She called out your name, Van. You stupid fool. Well, we tried to catch her afterwards. She's riding a fast horse. That isn't what I mean. You haven't gained a thing by this shooting, Van. I've got the mortgage. It's made out to me, and I'll never foreclose but it. But you promised Listen, me, Ben. This is the first time a man has won at the boundary and hasn't gotten home with his winnings. It won't happen again. Huh? You're through, Van. So are you, Pedro. And if the law comes looking for you here, I won't do a thing to stop you from being arrested. You'd better clear out right now and get over to Mexico. Pedro and I can't cross the river? No, senorita. There's a little business at the barrel last spring. The Mexican army would shoot us. You'd better get out of the county, then. You're not safe here. Not so fast, Bill. I have nothing more to say. Well, I do. I've put up with your high-handed tactics long enough. This gun says what? that I'm taking over. What are you going to do? Shoot me? Maybe. Go ahead. You're good at dry gulching. Let's see if you have the nerve to shoot somebody face to face. Oh, no, no. I'm not going to shoot you until you sign this mortgage over to me. I'll never sign it. Tire up, Pedro. Van, you certainly share if any posse will be coming out for us soon. Yeah, we'll tell the boys. We won't tell them why the posse's coming. We'll make those owl hoots believe the sheriff's coming after them. They'll fight for their lives and ours. You'd better shoot me, Van. I'll have something to say about that. Oh, no, you won't. Oh! oh. We'll tie her up and gag her, Pedro. Leave her in here with the door locked. We'll take care of the sheriff first, and then we'll take care of her. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. From the sheriff's wanted notices, Tonto was able to identify half a dozen of the men who were staying at the boundary. The sheriff swore in nearly a hundred deputies. And shortly after midnight, the posse rode out of town heading south for the river and Rio City. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had ridden on ahead. The sheriff found them waiting at the top of the ridge that overlooked the town. Howdy. Howdy, Rick. Have you told your men who I am? Yes, they understand. Yeah. Town looks dark and deserted. It isn't. Tom and I have watched them closing the shutters on the boundary. They're waiting for an attack. I'm surprised. I didn't think Bella'd stand for what Van and Pedro have done. We saw them. They're still there. Ah. Another outlaw there. That cafe looks more like a fort now. Yes, there's a gun at every gun slot. If you rode straight into town from here, you'd lose half of your men. There's nothing else we can do, is there? Tom and I have been talking about that. Seems there's an underground entrance to the cafe. Underground? Ah. Girl, keep it secret. Time to find out about it from Indian friend. Entrance to tunnel on Banker River. Tunnel go to cellar under cafe. It's a means of escape we'd have to block anyway, so Tom and I thought we'd investigate it. It might be a way of getting inside the place. It must be guarded. I'm sure it is. But one man would be enough to guard a tunnel. One man would be enough to rouse the whole place if he saw us coming. You and your men stay here for a while, Sheriff. We'll look over the possibilities. We'll be back in less than an hour, unless something happens to us. There's plenty of chances for that. Well, we'll have to take them. Wait for an hour before you attack. We will. Come on, Silver. Get them up, Stout. The Lone Ranger and Tonto kept the rim of the hills between themselves and the town as they circled down to the river. Then they rode slowly upstream until they reached a grove of cottonwoods near the edge of town. There, they dismounted. We'll leave Silver and Scout here, Tonto. Um, that good. There's not enough cover on bank for our horses. How far is it to the entrance of the tunnel? Maybe a quarter mile. All right, lead the way. Uh. The moon was full and etched a path of silver on the surface of the Rio Grande. But the undergrowth was heavy along the bank, and the Lone Ranger and Tonto moved carefully, silently, until finally the Indian stopped and placed a hand on the masked man's arm. Then he pointed to what only seemed to be a deeper shadow. It was the opening of the tunnel. As the two men watched, a match flared, and then they could see the steady glow of a cigarette. One man. Uh, I'll go first. The Lone Ranger moved fast. The guard felt a hand clamped over his mouth and a grip of steel twisting his arm behind him. A few minutes later, he was lying on the ground, a gag in his mouth, bound hand and foot. And the masked man and the Indian were starting through the tunnel. Otto, are there stairs leading up from the cellar to the first floor? Ah, uh, the steps lead up to trap door. Where is the trap door? What part of the building? Oh, Tonto, not know that. We'll find out. You go up to first floor? Yes. If we lead any men through here, we'll have to know where we're taking them. It was pitch dark in the tunnel, and the two men felt their way forward until they reached the end of it. Then... We'll have to risk a light. Find out where the steps are. Uh. To the right. This is the back of the building. Could they lead up to the kitchen? No. No kitchen on left side. Maybe go to office. Come on. You go up steps, open trap door. We must see if we can. Uh. Quiet now. Uh. What you see? It's a small room. Not much more than a closet. There's a little light coming underneath the door. Door room. Door go to office. We'll see if the door is open. <laughs> what key, Miss Ali? Belle Maitland's in there, lying on the floor. She's bound and gagged. Her prisoner. Her old men tie her up. Looks that way. We've got to find out what's happened. Oh, we're plenty dangerous. You go in there, Kimosabi. Men and cafe see you, then shoot to kill. The door of the cafe is shut. There's another chance we must take. Come on, we'll go in there. If I take off this gag, will you promise to keep quiet? All right. There. How did you get in here? The tunnel. What about the guard? We saw him before he saw us. Good. 
I'm on your side now, mister. Where's Rick? Is he bringing a posse? They're waiting on top of the ridge. I thought I might lead some of them through the tunnel and up here. The door to the cafe is locked. Van has the key. Hand up the rest of the ammunition, Pedro. I'll check the storeroom see if there's any more around. Somebody come in, Kim, or something. Quick, put the gate back. Go back to the storeroom and get down through the trap door. Van mustn't find you here. Go on, Toto. I'll follow you. Ah, me do it. There. Van went into the storeroom and a moment later walked back through the office with several boxes of ammunition. He locked the office door again from the outside. No sooner had the key turned in the lock than the Lone Ranger re-entered from the storeroom. Once more, he untied Belle's gag and began to cut the ropes around her ankles and wrists. Where's your friend? He's gone back to the ridge. I had an idea. It may work. What? Well, there's no point in bringing half a dozen or a dozen men into the tunnel with the door of the cafe locked. I noticed that small sliding panel in the door. I use it to look out in the cafe. Yes, without... I know. It can also be used to shoot through. Now, in exactly half an hour, the sheriff and his men will be riding into town from the east and the west. At that moment, I'm going to shoot out every light in the cafe. It ought to cause plenty of confusion. They'll find you in here. They'll kill you. As soon as it's completely dark, I'll shoot the lock off this door and go into the cafe. Well, that's even worse. It will happen fast. There's a chance I can get to the front door and throw it open. A chance. It will be dark, remember? And then what? After I open the door, I'll leave. I'll run for the cover of the stables. But I don't understand. Panic is like fire. It only needs a spark to set it off. When they see you run in the middle, they'll follow you. I hope. The posse will be coming in half an hour. Yes. But there's one thing you've forgotten. What's that? Then he may come back in here before then. I take it you want me to leave by the tunnel now. Yes. There's a grove of cottonwoods downstream. You can hide there until the fight's over. No, I'm not leaving. I want you to tie me up again, put the gag back. If Van looks in here, then he won't know anything's wrong. Don't you see? That's the way it has to be. You can set me free just before the half hour's up. I can still leave in time. Yeah, we'll be taking a chance. A small one in comparison with the one you'll be taking. Please, I want to help. And this is the only way I can. Very well. You better stay down in the cellar. Don't try to make it to the woods. I'll wait in the storeroom. The Lone Ranger tied the girl's ankles and wrists once more and replaced the gag. Then he took his position near the door leading to the cafe. The minutes ticked by. Once he heard Van and Pedro arguing on the other side of the door, and he started for the storeroom, but neither Van nor Pedro came into the office. At last, the moment for action came, and the Lone Ranger set the girl free. There you are. I'll help you up. Thank you. Good luck. The Lone Ranger watched the clock on the desk during the last minute. Then he put out the lamp and turned to the door. Quietly, he slid back the small panel. He took deliberate aim at the large chandelier that hung in the center of the cafe. He fired and it crashed to the floor. Then he deliberately picked off the small lamps on either end of the bar. He could hear the sheriff's posse heading for the cafe when he fired into the door. When he threw his weight against it and broke into the cafe, he found himself in the middle of a shouting, milling crowd of men. Matches flared here and there. He pulled his hat low over his mask and started toward the door. As he reached it, he found the means to create a panic with a single word. The oil from the broken lamps was lying in pools on the floor, and the careless match had sent one of them blazing. Already the flames had engulfed the table and a chair and were leaping toward the ceiling. Fire! Get out of here! Or you'll all be burned alive! It was no idle warning. The draft from the open door sent the flames racing toward the rear of the cafe, and the outlaws fought their way to the comparative safety of the outdoors. The Lone Ranger stepped aside and let them go, certain the sheriff and his posse would handle them. His only thought was for Bell. There was a solid wall of fire between him and the office. Suddenly, he saw the girl standing in the doorway. Quick, get out. Get out of the cellar and out through the tunnel. My pants, the file. I can't get to the trap door. There's no window in here. I've got to come out that way. The girl started toward the masked man, but a burning piece of wood dropped from the ceiling and hit her on the side of the head. She fell to the floor. The Lone Ranger ran through the flames toward her. When he reached her side, his shirt was afire in several places. He beat out the flames and picked up the unconscious girl and carried her back to the office. Oh, don't bother about me. Save yourself. We can't make it to the front door now. You've got to try. No. I saw an axe just inside the storeroom. The storeroom's on fire. You see if the axe is... No. Here it is. I should have done what you said, waited in the cellar. But I wanted to see what was going on. It's all right. We can drop through the floor here to the cellar. 
Get to the tunnel still if the floor of the storeroom doesn't cave in. Cut us off. What was that? One of the beams out in the cafe. I'll pull these boards loose. Like this. And this. Uh, there's room enough to drop through now. Here, let me help you. Talk a minute. Hurry. The girl and the lone ranger dropped through the hole in the floor and started running toward the entrance of the tunnel. As they neared it, the flaming timbers above them gave way, and a blazing barrel dropped to the ground directly in front of them. Come on around us. We're not cut off yet. The masked man took the girl's hand, and together they ran on under the flaming menace of the timbers overhead. A few seconds more, and the tunnel was reached. The tunnel and safety. <laughs> As the boundary burned to the ground, Belle Maitland watched the sheriff and his men rounding up the outlaws. She saw Van and Pedro dragged from the stables and handcuffs snapped on their wrists. At last, she squared her shoulders and walked toward the sheriff. Well, Sheriff, there's no more boundary. I told the masked man I'd surrender to you. I know. I've had a talk with him. You're facing a life sentence, Belle. A life sentence? But I didn't have anything to do with Tex Roberts' murder. I didn't say you did. This is a life sentence of cooking and sewing and keeping house. For me. Oh? You think you'd try to escape? No, Rick. The masked man saved my life. I told him I'd surrender to you and... Well, you know, I'd never break a promise to the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 